Get your grandma, sis. Get your grandma. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy Friday, damn it. Ciao. Ooh, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, Christina. What's up, everybody? Hey, everybody. Oh, I recognize that name. Hi, Christina. I think she's the sister of our guest. I love it. Welcome, welcome, Sam. Oh, uh, yay. <laughs> I am excited. How y'all doing? I'm good. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I am tired. Sis. But for um, but for good, like, it's been good, guys. Right. I'm picking up. I'm getting busy. Yes. The pandemic is maybe coming to a close. Well, not a close, but you know what I mean. Right. It ain't like a kick up. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> right. It ain't over. Right. It ain't over. Same. Um, but cool. What's but, up, Camille? You know, What's up, good. everybody? Hey, Camille. What up, family? Hey, how are y'all doing? Happy Friday. Let me share. Happy Friday, Jesus. You know what? I'm tired and I got an attitude because work worked my nerves, but I ain't going to bring that into the space. I'm just letting it go. <laughs> right. So I a good vibe with y'all. <laughs> We're going to have a great show tonight. A great, great, great show tonight. <laughs> I'm mad yeah. though. I had a whole face planned. I was going to do some hair. I was going to do all this fabulosity. I had a whole outfit planned and instead what you get is the bun and done. So, Honey, yeah. yes. Hey, and girl. listen. Damn. When I when we were in the virtual green room, okay, before starting the show, I had looked at Raj and said, "Category is Sorry, sexy librarian, honey. Yes, you better give me that. Hey. 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 Brushed up the bun, threw on the shirt and some lip gloss. I'm telling you, the struggle is real this week. But hey, <laughs> but you're doing it, okay? You're giving me, you yes. know, Dewey Decimal System during day. Then meet with your <laughs> girls for drinks by night. <laughs> okay. What? Listen, put a pencil okay. skirt on and, a, and some black pumps, and I'll slay your life, sis. Okay? Don't That's don't right. rip. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What's up, Miss Mary? Oh, my girl's on today. Gaida, hi, babe. Hi, Gaida. Happy What's to see up? the people. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, share. Yes. Family. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, Carrie? I'm good. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? But listen, it, it is like um, Mo was saying, beautiful things, big things go on, you know? I mean, I get mad. Right, I get right. Mad. Yeah. You got some reasons to be tired. Right. Exactly. Well, I see y'all are rocking the Adidas today. I didn't get the memo, clearly, but, you know, y'all are swagged out with your sporty <laughs> swag. I love it. <laughs> Honey, we love the sporty swag, okay? Yes. Listen. All day, every day. <laughs> y'all have how is everybody party. watching? Everybody who's joining us now, how are you? How are your weeks? Let us know. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have a really dope show today. Super excited about our special guest. Mm -hmm. We'll talk oh, about exactly. her. You was giving me all the life with the sunshine, sunshine pics today. I seen you, sis. I seen you all up in New York in the sunshine. And we up out here about to have a snowstorm in Colorado. You know, I'm hating a we little bit. Three feet. A little bit, girl. Jesus. Child. Not just a snowstorm. A I know, it's about to be. freaking okay. avalanche. <laughs> I mean, when you see in the forecast two to four feet of snow, where are we? Where, who? Where, what? Huh? Right. And not even. I think isn't that two days? Like it's gonna be three to four feet, and then three to four feet or something. Like I'm not ready. I'm not ready. We did. We did. But I'm just, I feel like sometimes we gas it up. You know, they right. prepared. Can you go catch me slipping? Okay. Right. Um. But I feel like it when they when they act up, nothing really happens. You know what I'm saying? Because then a couple of times I feel like I didn't get no notification and it was three feet of snow outside. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Right. So, I'm just, so we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know. I know. know. I'm like, but we pray. I hope they either way. Right. 
I hope it's a lie because I tell you what, I, I don't know how y'all feel, but being in quarantine for this long, I am just done with being in my house. I need to be in the sunshine. Last week when it was like 60, 70 degrees outside, I literally sat on my patio and prayed a, a gratitude prayer for the sunshine because I just feel like we've been stuck in the house so long and it's and the weather is not helping. At least if we could walk around the block or something, but man. I know you said rub it in. That's right. Seven. <laughs> 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 oh, no, we don't care about you. Seventy-six degree. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just a hater. I'm hating. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hate <me>. Okay. <laughs> no, but the weather oh. really does do something to you. Last weekend, I had energy. Yes. I wake up when you hear the little birds. You'd be like, "Hey, birds, how you doing outside? Right? Feeling You're good." Right. Girl, and when it's 20 degrees, honey, back hurting, mm. hips hurting. I what a thing. Can't exactly. get out of bed. It's so true. It's so true. But we here. Christina said, I still feel cold. I know. I feel like it takes you a while to thaw out. Even when the weather starts to get warmer, it's like mm, you're not white. You don't feel it for like a week mm. or a two. So. Right. But yeah, what's up, Camille? Welcome back to the East Coast. It was good to see you in the class, sis. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Yes. I would like y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Hit that share button on your Facebook so you can let all the people on them know what we're doing here at the Sit Podcast. We meet every mm -hmm. Friday, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. And I love to see new faces in the space. So we're going to yeah. have a really great show for you guys today. Before we get into all the crazy, we got a really dope announcement. What's you want to you want to take it away, Carrie? I I hope it yes. works, girl. It's a little choppy, but let's see. Go ahead. Can, can you hear me now? We can yes, you can hear you. Me now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, beautiful family as you you have heard and seen and it's been so much hype around next Friday. We will be hosting a panel the SIP podcast presents Black Women in Jazz, celebrate the life and legacy of the holiday. We have the amazing multi award with Grammy Award winning jazz vocalist Diane Reeves. We have ethnomusicologist from Berkeley College of Music, Asia Rell Wood. We have uh, um, jazz vocalist Joe Foggy and jazz vocalist Kim Dawson are going to be on this panel. It's going to be a beautiful event. We're going to give away two free tickets tonight, okay? Yay! So, yes, we're going to two virtual tickets tonight because we are sold out in person. Listen, we're not playing no games, all right? right. Um, but tonight, what we're going to ask you to participate is... We want to know. We want you to go ahead and put this in the chat, right? If you want to participate, we're going to ask you a question. You put the answer in the chat. We're going to go ahead and see who wants to get a free ticket. I'm going to uh, write down the name. You're going to jumble all up. And at the end of the show, we're going to find out, you. all right? I'm going to stop you real quick, Carrie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Can everybody hear what Carrie's saying? There's a little bit of a connectivity issue. If you can't hear 100%, let us know. But I want to, we want to make sure that you hear this. I'm so sorry, Carrie. And, and just, just to okay. recap, I want to make sure you can hear. Yeah, I hope I hope that y'all have seen the flyer that we have posted about this incredible Billy Holiday event. Um, Carrie was saying we're going to be giving out free virtual tickets tonight, so stay tuned. She's going to give you the instructions. But um, I'm so excited about this event, y'all. We literally were just talking about this a week ago as an idea. And we've got sponsorships and information. It's just so incredible. We're so excited to have the panelists who are going to be there. Diane Reeves is going to be there. Asia Burrell Wood is going to be there. Listen, our favorite, some of our favorite jazz vocalists based in Denver are going to be there. Joe Foke and uh, Kim Dawson. And we really, no, more than anything, we want to come together and celebrate Billie Holiday. Because yes, you got to see a glimpse of her in the film, but there is so much more to this incredible artist and incredible entertainer and an incredible activist. And we just want to highlight her life. And we want to speak to these powerful women because we know not only do they know a lot about Billie Holiday, but they 
also were, are going to share their experience as jazz women performers on this panel. So make sure that you guys tune in. I love it, Christina. She said, I already got mine. I'm with you, sis. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Show, Carrie, can we hear you? Let's see. So I'm going to try one more time. I don't know if the gods are with me. But I'm also going to put it in, in the chat, okay? okay. So okay. we're giving away two virtual tickets. To participate, we need you to answer the following question in the comments. If you could ask Billie Holiday one question, Ooh. what would it be? Repeat it and poke it in the comments. If you could ask Billie Holiday one question, what would it be? Ready, mm -hmm. set, go. And we will announce the winner at the end of the show. Right. So you got to stick around, okay? <laughs> yes, we do. And you also yes. need to be following us on Instagram at the sip mm -hmm. underscore podcast. So if you are not following us, jump on over there and follow us now. You have right. to post the event flyer on your page and tag us. Mm -hmm. And then invite your friends to buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, and then yes, we'll, wait to, we'll wait to see your, um, your, your answers. Yeah. Go ahead and um put that that uh those instructions up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um I, I will I will work on doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's That's like, guys, work with us. Because I'm like uh, everything. Let me, let me let me see how I could do this. <laughs> But yes, awesome. I will That's definitely. One question today. already. That's dope. Thank you, Christina. Word. I'm tracking y'all. I'm tracking. Keep them coming. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, let's get into these sisters in power for the week. Well, yes. So we also wanted to mention um, again, y'all. We have sip teas that are on the way. Um, the design is almost finalized. We will be sharing them, and we appreciate you guys supporting us on our Patreon as well. Nick, you wanted to mention there was somebody who just joined. Not yet, but you know, I just wanted to shout out Abby. She is in our top tier. Honey is out here sharing the word. And so we appreciate you, Abby. I know when you when you watch this, you will hear us. We have so much love for you, sis. So thank you for sharing the word um, yeah. of our podcast and just all the things that we're trying to do. Yeah. So we have- but Yes, we have if you haven't signed up, take your behind right on over to patreon.com slash the sit podcast <laughs> and sign up. Me. And what's really great is when you're a top tier member, when we throw events like this, you yeah. get a front row ticket for free. So, yeah. you know, it's a win-win, yeah. sis. It's a win-win. Hey. We will we will share the link to the Patreon soon, um, but make sure that not only are you following the Patreon, y'all subscribe to our YouTube channel too, because we put up all of our past episodes there. And if you get tired of being on Facebook, but you want a little bit of a sip, you can go right to the YouTube channel, subscribe. We're trying to build that up as well. But the more that you guys share these videos, the more that you share our page, the more visibility we get, and the more we can keep bringing you amazing content for us and by us. So thank you all so much for your incredible support. Absolutely. Okay, you wanna dig into the sister, these sisters in power? Yes, 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 let's, let's go. Yes. Who you got this week, Raj? Who you got this week? So my sisters in power, you know, they might be slightly shady, but it's still, it's still all good in the hood, okay? Because I know we don't get to the shady parts of the BANs, but I'm starting with the shade right off the bat. So, first of all, again, she was already my sister in power before, but Stacey Plaskett from the House of Representatives is my freaking spirit animal, y'all. I don't know who follows the news, but Stacey Plaskett is a House representative. She was part of the impeachment committee, um, and she was one of the ones who delivered like the best case for impeaching Trump uh, a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago when they were doing that. There was, uh, she was on the House floor and there was a representative, Glenn Grothman, who were, who had the nerve to say that advocates for black lives don't like the old fashioned family. And he was trying to be shady about black families on the House floor. Stacey Plaskett was not hearing it. She was like, how dare you? And what I love mm. about her, cause I'm not gonna go too long about her, but what I love about these black women in Congress right now in the House and the Senate is that they are suffering no fools. They're not gonna let words pass by when 
without it being honored, without it being spoken about, and without without it being addressed in the moment. And I can't tell you how many how many times I've seen someone say something real raggedy in in the news or in politics or whatever, and it just goes on by and no one ever mentions it. Not now, not today. We got AOC, we got Stacey Plaskett, we got Cori Bush, we got so many of them up in Congress and in the House of Representatives who are showing up for our people. And I just wanted to shout her out. She is definitely my sister in power of the week. Um, I'm going to... Also mentioned this next woman, which will, which will go into our BANs later, but this is the right here. Dr. Shola Ma Shobaminmu uh, went after Pierce Morgan about the Meghan Markle interview and spit red him for filth. He was like, oh, God. <laughs> she was like, you're disgusting on live television. She would not let him get away with it otherwise. Can't nobody argue like a black woman and sis read him for filth. And that's probably why his ass walked off the next day. That's probably why his ass is not going back to the TV show because a black woman set him straight. I'm sure he's going to lie and say it wasn't that, but it was. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and finally, and I don't know if we have time to really dig into this, but there's an author that I've loved for a while. Her name is Ijeoma Alo. She's the author of So You Want to Talk About Race. If you guys go on her Instagram, she did this really great uh, post about Meghan Mar Markle. And what I love about it, I'm just going to read a little bit of it uh, because I think it really hit home to me. And I think a lot of times we as light-skinned women of color, um, we don't often speak out and and talk about colorism in a way that is uh, real and that challenges us in the moment. And I thought it was really powerful that Ijeoma uh, made this commentary. So I'm going to share this with y'all. And then if y'all want to talk about it in the comments or whatever, because this would literally take up the whole episode. <laughs> but I just want to read this because I felt like sis snatched my edges as well as everybody else's edges with this <laughs> with this comment. So she said, I've noticed that quite a few light-skinned black people looking at the Meghan Markle interview and thinking, now is my time. The world will finally see how hard it is to be me. But before we turn this into our own personal spotlight on beige tears, let's be real here. First off, we're talking about treatment that Markle experienced after marrying into the royal family. This is not the everyday story of black existence. This is the story of how if you are a thin, abled, white passing celebrity, you literally have to become royalty before you begin to experience some of the more harsh realities of being black in a white supremacist institution that has been murdering darker skinned folk for hundreds of years. The reason that I want to bring this up is because I think a lot of times I've seen a lot of people have sympathy for Meghan Markle, and I think we should, because I think that racism anywhere is racism everywhere. And I think that for a woman to speak about her experience and the challenges that she faces in any white, you know, uh, in any white get out situation, I don't know how else to put it, <laughs> but for her to, to share her story um, definitely is valid. But let us not be lulled into thinking that we should just only be supporting her tears because there are a lot of people who have it a lot worse. And there are a lot of black folks who would never even have the opportunity to marry into the royal family. So, I mean, she goes in and says so much more in this. She's like, this is not a, a story about how darker skinned black folk need to be lighter to light skinned black folk because we experience racism too. I just think that we need to call it out when it happens. We need to be honest about it when it happens. And we need to continue to support all black Black people, but check your beigeness, y'all. Check your light skin privilege. Be honest okay. about it. Be real about it. And um, and don't use that as a calling card to come up and say, "Oh, I experience racism too." You know, I'm, I I have no illusions about people who accept me in spaces who wouldn't accept some of my darker skin sisters. I make it a point to be extra black in those spaces. But I understand that sometimes there's places that I get to go into that other people don't. I don't take that for granted, and I think we always need to be talking about it. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Dig into the comments, y'all, because we can have a whole damn, you know thesis about it so i'm honey, gonna she preached a whole ready to read these. yes honey where Let's is go. the offering plate and the Sister. flat <laughs> hand <and organ>? yeah <laughs> yes. yes yes okay um, i definitely think we could that. do a show just on top yes. just about this 
Mm-hmm. But girl, yes, thank you for sharing that. And I think too, people yes. were saying that there was a comment that Megan made about, well, I, you know, people just, you know, I'm representing and I know that there's so many people who were happy to see that I was in this place and almost saying it like she was representing all people of color and mm. yeah, just, just mm. don't, don't mm. be able to save your complex as you're telling your down. story. Let's, let's understand your privilege and that your privilege got you there. And let's be real about that. So absolutely. I'm sure. Cause oh, those are facts. Yeah. When I, I just black feel like everywhere. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. you know, I think Megan has lived an absolutely priv- privileged life and has not experienced the level of racism that maybe we do. And mm-hmm. so, I don't know what sis was really expecting. That part. I don't know what part. were you expecting, sis? Like Right. Right. You know, we we can get into this later. Right. I know we got a special guest waiting in the virtual, the you know, the virtual thing. We still got to get to these BANs, but we, we can have a whole conversation know. about people who marry white people and think that they've arrived. We can have that whole ass conversation <laughs> another time. Okay, where the popcorn? Where is the popcorn, <laughs> Carrie? Where is the popcorn? <laughs> I just spilled the tea all over my leg. <laughs> I was looking for the band, yeah, but you God. right. Anywho, go ahead. Snatch them, Edges, Ryan. Snatch them. Carrie, who's your, who's your sip for the week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Hold on. Watch you watching a popcorn. <laughs> Babe, let, me, let me true. Let me true. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, speaking of some um, extra dope black girl magic. And really representing for the, you know, the darker sisters out there, you know what I'm saying? And making sure that we're centering that experience. I'm going to give some love to Sister Empower this week. Marcy Martin, y'all. I see her role who is doing all the things yes. and is like really, I mean, just changing the game. And so I'm just giving her some love for a new show that she has coming out on Disney called Saturday. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what it's about because it's so dope. And like I said... Um, all of the the the, the young men cast on this show are darker black women, and it just makes me so proud, you know, to see her stay true to who she is and make sure that that's represented on screen. But Saturday follows Paris, who since the age of four has been honing her skills on the on the cool parquet floor of Saturdays, a local skating rink, local skating rink owned and operated by a former. 90s hip hop backup dancer with its neon lights, galaxy painted rink, and DJ spinning the latest music. Saturday is the place to show and prove. Paris is the leader of a skate club and is determined to take them all the way to the top. However, she has sickle cell disease, and when it flares up, it'll make every ounce of determination prove the doubters wrong, including her family. So she's talking about so much, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> In the show. That's what just reading that, like, there, it's so layered. And like I said, big love to her. She's a 16-year-old Black woman in this world. You can pay her away. I salute you. You just said power. So. Yes. 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 All of that. I love me for Marseille, honey. Yes. Yes. Awesome. awesome. So I'm going to keep mine brief, but um, I did want to... Uh, not definitely not to make it a somber thing and bring the mood down, but I wanted to shout out the 13 year old girl who just took um, the internet by storm lyric Chanel. She battled um, a rare brain cancer for the last few years and she did pass away last week and her mother put up a tribute video of Beyonce singing to her. Oh, when man. I tell y'all I was in the bed sobbing oh, at four or five o'clock God. in the morning. Like Beyonce was like singing um, Halo to her and saying her name. And oh, um, oh, man. It, it just, this, but you know, I've been following this, this little girl for a while and just to still see how through her pain, she was dancing, she was still trying to sing. I, um, Beyonce sent her an Ivy Park box a few months ago and she did a photo shoot, um, sick honey, like sick, but still did the photo mm. shoot. And I just wanted to give this beautiful girl just mm. a huge rest in power. She lived a beautiful 13 years on this planet and shout out to 
all of the celebrities who use their celebrity to um, just give her a little bit of peace and joy in her final days. And so I wanted to shout her out this week. Um, may Lyric Chanel rest in forever peace and may yes. her family just receive as much peace and comfort and love during this horrible time. Amen. And that's all I wanted to say. Awesome. So, well, Amen. here we go. <laughs> Now we about to talk about the I'm ready. Listen, I want to go first because I have something to say about Mr. Papa John. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Good girl. Go. And Good listen, Mr. growing up in Louisville, Kentucky, Papa John's is from Louisville, Kentucky. Growing up in Louisville, he was like, you know, that was the fundraiser for school child, Papa John's. We got Papa John's football stadium. He a B.A.N. Because it's such a stay. <laughs> That for the past 20 minutes, 20 months, for the past 20 months, he has been trying. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, I can't even get it out because it's just so ridiculous. He said for the past 20 months, he has been trying to get the N-word out of his vocabulary. You know what? Let me come up and bitch slap him one good time. He'll, he'll get what? it. Good goddamn time. He'll get it. What planet do you live on, sir, where you do an interview that goes to all of the internets, okay? Anyways. The internet. Oh, the whole interwebs. <laughs> the whole interwebs where you say. Have the nerve. How hard you've been trying not to say the N-word for the last Word. 20 months. Come on. And your pizza's trash anywho. Listen, I be making my own that's pizza. I don't even need your little trash pizza. But you a B-A-N, sir. You a whole B-A-N. Because I'm like, how many times did you say in the N-word? <laughs> like, if you need to get it purged from your system. Mm -hmm. What? And you want well, to use that credit? Time frame. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And to use that, that time frame. 20 months. Like, 20 I was trying months? to think about the thing that black people... <laughs> And that's been and demanding. Like, like, well, let me just be like, hey, Cracker John, how you doing, Cracker John? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get right? out, of my, out of my system, Honky. Like, why, why we got to do all like, that? Like, I know every day month is like, oh, I didn't make it today. I ain't make it today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Cracker John, honey. Hey. That's oh, my God. Get him. Get him. Oh, the quarter in the thing. Oh, Kim said greasy ass. Hi, Kim. Greasy, greasy ass. ass. <laughs> I can't. The picture is trash. You ugly. You a whole honky. And you're cancer. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. Get him. Yeah. Okay. I got. I got. I got. Oh wait. No, Nick. You want to do your other B A N? Or you want me to? And then that? just real quick. I mean, who is probably the entire you know world's B A N at this point? Piers Morgan. Like, first of all, your name is Piers. Okay. Right. Right. Sir, I. I'm not even going to sit here and repeat all of the atrocities that came out of this fool's mouth. But I will say. That little light skin, um, Mr. Alex, man, he clowned him. Yes, he if did. we if we gonna give a brother in power for the week, a bit for the week, honey. I said, yeah, what are they doing cool. over in London, honey? Y'all are reading white people on television in London, honey. Get them. Do you want to go to the UK and pop up on them? Like <laughs> right, right. He right. said. He said what he said. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> he got him together, and I was like, yes. So you got hey. clowned by a mixed race black man. You got clowned by a black woman all in a couple of days. <laughs> let me let me, let me say. Yeah, go, what, you, what you gonna say? What you gonna say? Yeah, no, here, 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 here's, looking. here's the tea about Pierce Morgan that I just think is so freaking interesting. First of all, apparently he took Meghan Markle out on a date, and then the same night she met Prince Harry. Here's the tea, sir. Meghan Markle didn't want to go out on a date with you. She wanted a free dinner and a drink. Let's be real. So <laughs> Meghan Markle true. allowed you Let's to take true. her out somewhere as they got hard to do. You she's saying thank you. And so that's what he said to him. 
Miss ain't got a whole drink in her head. I said, you can drop me off at this party over here. And then she met her husband and got a, and went on with her life. He said she ghosted her and never called him back. You big mad. Thank you, Monique. You big mad, sir. Big mad. I didn't even know that they went on a date. Because every time oh, yeah, Alex kept whole thing saying about it. Crying. Like, I know that you guys had a relationship where you got, and I was like, what relationship are you talking about? He's like, oh, we didn't have a relationship, you know. Oh, because she's probably like, you a BAN sucker and saw them red flags. But sis, right. why did you go on a date with Pierre Morgan in the first place? <laughs> That's neither here nor there. I'm going to tell you, sis was hungry. Sis was hungry. Right. She was like, hungry and I'm like, somebody take like, it. Like, it's been a too. I mean, you know. Oh, let's listen. Oh, snap. Oh, oh, he was on a date. That man's been married. But he was married? Oh, Wait a minute. He was married and still be crying about Meghan Markle? That's how you know a girlfriend is good. That's how you know. That's how you know. <laughs> Carrie with the popcorn. <laughs> oh, Kim says she met up with him to talk about her show and he turned it into something else. See, that's why she goes. Oh, he a B-A-N. Mm. Thank you, Kim. Oh, he a B-A-N. Now you even more of a B-A-N, sir. Exactly. Because you're still running over somebody and your ass is married. And if I was your wife, which I wouldn't be, but if I was your wife, you'd have had a whole <laughs> ass whooping that night that you walked off that stage. Wow. A whole His ass whooping. His poor wife, honey. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe she got, hopefully she got a little boyfriend on the side, honey, because I, mm -mm. And I bet you he black. And I bet you he tall, and I bet you he can get it in real good. But that's all I'm gonna say. About that. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm done with this. I'm done. Oh, I know we're gonna have coot today. We're trying to have coot on this show. I'm sorry, y'all. We ain't never trying to have no coot. Don't listen to her. Okay. <laughs> okay let me tell you my funny ban, and then we go, and then we go. Yes. Do our thing. Well, who's your ban? Okay, so this one's funny, y'all. Oh, wow. Kim said, don't feel bad about, about his wife. He, she willfully married that piece of shit. Yes, she you did. Know, I was I know. right. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. But okay, so my it. BAN, y'all, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up in 2021. <laughs> my BAN, his name is Isaac Sturgeon. He's a white man, 32, from Dillon, Montana. He was part of the D.C. Capitol attack, right? And he was caught on body on body cameras of cops. So he so they knew he was there. Someone tipped him off that the authorities were looking to arrest him for January 6th. So his ass fled to Kenya. But here's the gag. <laughs> Kenya put his ass back to the U.S. <laughs> right into the waiting arms of the feds. And his ass was arrested last weekend. Listen, you can't make this shit up. Can't make I wasn't sure. in Kenya, Kenya, Your Honor. Kenya. Kenya, though. Kenya. Can you though? Can you though? And they Kenya were like, no. No, fam. Hell to the no. Isaac Sturgeon, no, y'all. No, no. no. I got a good old laugh on that one. Listen, honey. <laughs> what that, how did that feel? He was in his he little, little, he really little hotel in Kenya thinking he got away. And they said, no, sir, not today. We on saw where beach. he was at. <laughs> right. Somebody. <laughs> Get this take man, hunt him down. America, take him. Take him. I don't want this over here. But also, <laughs> don't even want him. <laughs> no. But also, did you really think he was going to blend in in Kenya, sir? Like, you couldn't what go to, like, sir? Kenya? You couldn't go to London? Like, you went to Kenya? Sir, you should have went to Ireland, bro. You should have <laughs> went to Scotland. Like, Scot right? Kenya? Switzerland? Kenya? You know what I'm saying? Switzerland. Ooh. You would have blend. Honey, the North Pole, the Antarctica, like... <laughs> <laughs> we can't be but Africa, sir. Anywhere but Africa. <laughs> oh, Christina said, go back to Stripe. Do not collect $200. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh, I'm dead. Ooh, child, I'm we dead. ain't right for that. We ain't right for that. But it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, okay. let us introduce the fabulosity that is about to hit y'all today. Cause I love this woman and she has such a beautiful heart and she's gorgeous to match. So I'm just, you know, uh, thank y'all for putting up with our, our shenanigans, but I want to introduce my great, great friend, Cami Percent. Cami originally hails from the Midwest, Davenport, Iowa to be exact. 
For 25 years, I'm sorry, 25 years ago, she decided to make the move to New York to pursue a career in acting, musical theater, and makeup. And 15 years ago, she was able to break into the professional makeup world as an artist, leader, and coach for a major global makeup brand that took her career to the next level. She's worked in film, TV, red carpet, theater, numerous seasons backstage during New York Fashion Week, as well as private clients and celebrities. Her company, I Make Faces, was born out of the pandemic with a need to stay connected to people and address their skin and beauty needs. She's married with two children and currently resides in the Bronx, New York. I also love Cami because she has done my face for a lot of my covers when I was in New York for a lot of my singles and my albums. She's just a beautiful soul. I was introduced to her uh, by May May, by Guy to Gilliard, and I just really love her. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the incredible Cami Person. Welcome. Hey, look at the glow. Just Welcome, sis. Did you hear our shenanigans? Sorry about that. <laughs> you did hear that sometimes. At the time. Right. <laughs> and we didn't even talk about everybody else, but what you sipping on, girl? Oh, girl, I just had, um, I was teaching prior to coming on here, so I had to keep it simple. So I still have a little bit of tea in my eye makes face. Wow. I like the cup, yeah. though. That is the mug. Ooh. Just a little bit of uh, some tea with some milk. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. Nice. Well, I'm happy to see you and you look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I'm I'm so excited to be here um, on this platform and so proud of all you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We're proud it's of so you. Honest, you have for quite a while. Yes. I know you've seen us before we even started doing the sip and all this stuff. So it's so uh, it's such an honor to have you here, sis. Oh, so so tell, tell me a little bit about who Cami is. Wait. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. The question of the day. Girl, I it's always be okay. on. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. You. See, and while prepared mentally, emotionally to answer that question, I have another question. <laughs> right. It's called, <laughs> and it is a, a, it's a surprise question every week. It's the question of the day. So my friend uh, Leah James posted this, and I've the Responses this have been hilarious, so I'm very curious to see how this goes. You're a burglar, right? So imagine that you are a burglar. But you can only steal things that mildly inconvenience your victims. What you gonna take? Say that one more time. Yeah. I'm a burglar. You are a burglar. Yep. But you can only steal things that mildly inconvenience your victims. What are you gonna take? And one example is, I'm still the plate that goes in the microwave. What else? Okay, so you said you can only steal things that mildly inconvenience your victims? Yes. Yes, okay. Okay. What you gonna take? Okay. Ready? You, look, you, <laughs> you ready, Mo? <laughs> I'm gonna take your, your fingernail clippers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you get mad. I'm taking all the makeup. Oh no, I won't. Actually, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want that because I don't know where it's been. <laughs> Respect. I think I'll take the mu whatever music you got hanging around. Whatever scene. Ooh, okay. Whatever. So this is supposed to be something that that we want. Yeah, it's something that you. you oh, okay, it's whatever, no. but as long as it, as long as that mildly as long as that mildly inconveniences you make those. I don't want to give y'all too many like answers, but there's a bit of bitch. Like, right. for example, someone said I'm gonna take. One half, or oh, I'm gonna take one pair of every sock, like one of every sock pair, right? I'm gonna take just one, right? Some people right. like, I'm gonna take all the light bulbs in the house, right? Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, stuff like that. The way my petty is setting up, set up, I'm taking all your phone charges, I'm taking all your oh, phone charges, and all the plugs for all your laptops. <laughs> Listen, I don't I like that. That <laughs> right. I'm taking the Wi-Fi router. Ooh, Ooh that's me, man. Oh, you mad? Ooh. <laughs> Steffi said batteries from the remote. Dang, Steffi. Oh, yeah. That's honey. <laughs> that's tough. She said toilet paper, all the forks in the house. All the forks, <laughs> right? Exactly. All the silverware. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I think yes. the light is a great one. <laughs> yeah, the light bulbs is good. Yeah, light yes. bulbs. 
Okay, Miss Cammy. So <laughs> who is Cammy Person? Um, I'm a lot of things. <laughs> I'm a kaleidoscope. Come on, kaleidoscope. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm a, 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 a woman, a black woman, a biracial woman. A woman of uh, kindness and mm. moving from the heart. I'm a mom. I'm a um, I'm a leader. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a wife. I'm a friend. I'm I'm someone who roots for the little person. Yeah. Uh, someone who um, will fight harder for you sometimes than myself. Mm. Uh, I believe in doing hard things, um, doing the right thing even when it's hard. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, I am someone who believes that we should, if you know better, do better. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I love, love that. that. I love that. And tell me, because you, you're from Iowa. So how did this small town girl from Iowa end up moving to New York? And tell me about that whole journey. Um, so I uh, was, I've been in, feels, I feel like I've been in music and, and theater and the arts my entire life. Yes. Always been in somebody's choir. I've always, you know, done something even from an early, early age. Um, I studied theater at the University of Iowa. I've never mm -hmm. anything else. Mm -hmm. Thing um, makeup wasn't even in the really in the in in my vision at all. Um, probably just because it wasn't something that was um, in front of my face. Mm -hmm. So I got in college and was doing different types of productions where I was actually responsible for doing my and learning my own makeup. Yeah. And when I when uh, I was in college, I was a theater major. So that gave me the inspiration. to You know, I knew as a theater major at the University of Iowa, even though it's a it, it's a very um, well known program. The undergrad mm -hmm. in particular mm -hmm. um, is a very well known program. Um, but I also knew that I needed to get beyond where I was in order to do what I wanted to do originally was broad uh, musical theater. Yes. And, you know, I came out here when I was in high school, came out to New York when I was in high school uh, to do a choir competition with my high school choir. Mm -hmm. Had an amazing time. And I just remember leaving there thinking, I have to live here someday. I have to live here. Mm -hmm. Like Broadway and we yeah. competed did very well. It was amazing city, big city lights. And I, I knew at that point that I wanted to live in New York and um, I just actually literally, did, I, I was in school at the time that I came here and I literally just got the opportunity. I was working full time and I was, you know, in school and mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to move out here um, and transfer with my job that I was working mm -hmm. and I literally got in my car and traveled with wow. the car. Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the rest. I'm here. This is where I'm at now. And how, wait, how long have you been in New York now? 25 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you have a beautiful singing voice too. I've heard you sing, Cammy. My God, it's, you know, I love your makeup, makeup artistry, of course, but I love your voice just as much, sis. So I'm, I'm excited. I, I would love to see whatever you do, whether it's singing as well as, uh, as well as your cosmetic work. But now that we're showing your site, tell me what started your love, like for cosmetics, especially. And then how did you end up that being your full time job? Once you came to New York, how did you? get started um well i i think it, the you know it's it started a little bit in college when i was starting to do my own makeup and mm -hmm. uh, for productions and things like that and and um was getting more and more curious about it i never personally wore too much makeup i was very mm -hmm. very much a minimalist mm -hmm. um, ways i still am uh that way but <clears throat> i as far as actually branching out and actually seeing that as a career, it wasn't something that where I grew up, it wasn't something that I could visualize for myself or visualize. Mm -hmm. um, and once I moved to New York, 
I started, um, well, I was running around everywhere, singing, gigging, doing whatever, auditioning. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just really, really attracted to, uh, you know, theater, movies, film, and yes. took a, a mo- I went took a modeling class. Actually, I got into modeling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and then it just kind of really flourished and took off from there because mm-hmm. I again had to learn and do my own makeup. Mm-hmm. Uh, shows that I was doing and it just it just continued that way and mm-hmm. I really started more so in the in the um skincare realm mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I, um and I you know would take what I knew and just build on that and just watch and I I totally I, I'm someone who's self-taught so I've never taken a makeup course I've never wow. go for makeup I yeah. st- and studied and studied and studied and studied and mm-hmm. you know YouTube videos. I mean, and you know now the resources are bountiful, but you know in the '90s they were not. So right. it was something where I had to really, really um, hone in and really fall in love with the art of makeup and just the transformation of it. The uh, you know just watching my clients yeah. when going from you know one thing to the other. And just seeing that, you know, having that connection, but also being able to to really to really see that transformation for people and how it really lit up lit their lives up or mm-hmm. self esteem or mm-hmm. you know tears or cause tears mm-hmm. you know, so many right. things and you know I've you know been able to also work on you know cancer patients and people who um, you know really you really get to serve people that way. And one of the things about New York and when I started working in makeup here was I had the great opportunity to work with a lot of um, organizations uh, that were um, serving people that weren't being served, you know, Mm -hmm. so um, AIDS wings, uh, Mm -hmm. cancer patients, uh, you know, a lot of different, you know, children even Mm -hmm. things like that for sick children. So it was that I just found a way to transcend the art of beauty into healing. Yes. Action yeah. into um, an art, you know, and just really the biggest part of it for me was always just that, okay, how do you feel? How do you look? Mm-hmm. And I love it. That's the whole mm-hmm. point and, and transferring mm-hmm. connection. So once I got into that, I decided I wanted a career out of it. So Mm-hmm. Part of my career in makeup with a major global brand, mm-hmm. um, got up the ranks super quick. I was very passionate about it. I, you know, learned so much. I was able to coach so many people and and teach people, and I really love that aspect of it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, allowed me to build my own makeup skill. Mm-hmm. They put me in front of people that I don't think I would have been in front of otherwise, or it'd been much harder to be yeah. in front of backstage, New York, you know, fashion week and things like that. And been introduced to so many different facets of makeup that I didn't even know existed until I was in the, you know, in the thick of it and doing it. And, you know, it, it just, it's stuck, you know, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. a passion of love. It's something that I don't think, you know, when I think about art, music, theater, um, makeup, all of these things are all intertwined. Yeah. Yeah. Other and I don't I don't see the one without the other. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm great right. about to be space for the time that I was because I know that and in the in the thick of it, I didn't think I was making a difference. Oh, Cammy, I can I wow. you know, I just want to say um, of, I know that I did now. I know that I did now. I, I can honestly say with that, you know, you have such a kind heart and a healing spirit. And I can mm-hmm. tell you there, you know, you and I have worked together probably on some of the most stressful moments that I've had. You were part of the natural video shoot and we did that all day long. And I got to say, being able to stand next to you when the madness was happening and have you be such a calming force um, on a shoot was really awesome and healing for me. And every time I've come to 
be in your chair. It's usually in the in the, in the midst of some madness, and you're always so calming. So I feel like you know a good makeup artist doesn't just make you feel good about yourself, but they give you like a moment of peace as you're getting mm. ready for usually what is a stressful event or something that you're really excited about. So I think yeah. it does come through um, a lot in the work that you do. Can I ask you some of your like greatest fashion or cosmetic inspirations? Like who who's somebody that you just you know, every time you see them, you're inspired by their work or their work has inspired, you know, some of the things that you've created, any of that? Um, There's so many. <laughs> I'm a big fan of people like Sir John. Mm -hmm. um, they and things like that. Uh, big, I'm uh, Kevin O'Quan, um, mm -hmm. who's no longer with us, but uh, he was probably big influential for me, his aesthetic. Um, uh, Sam Fine, Dinesa, mm -hmm. I'm like all over her right now. Like I'm obsessed with her uh, <laughs> right now. I just, I, I just, wow. She just makes everything look so easy. Pat McGrath, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many, um, you know, celebrity type of people, but I tend to be drawn to uh, high fashion. I tend to be drawn to, um, you know, beauty, but really well executed. Yes. You know, flawless beauty. Um, mm -hmm. Call it skin first beauty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very strategic and it just really pulls out the person's features. Um, I, I tend to follow, you know, people like that. I, you know, it, I think those are like my base people that I tend to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, with one eye, ooh, ooh, so you know, <laughs> much. You know, you. I, I, I bought a course from Dinesa Merrick's not too long ago, where I'm watching videos and things of hers, um, because I, you know, school is never out. You know, right. I've been doing it for so long, but you know, you have to understand that makeup trends change all yeah. the time. Right, right. It, it changes seasons, which is you know something people don't understand. And and like we're in spring, but we're in fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, you, you have to stay with those trends. And I think that for me, those individuals, um, there's people that I, that I, you know, that aren't on, you know, so-called, you know, A-list celebrity makeup artists that mm -hmm. I all the time because like Romero Jennings and Carrie Blair Wald, Carrie Blair and mm -hmm. um, Thomas, like those are some of my inspirations while I, you know, now, but I met them through what, what I was doing mm -hmm. uh, in the global brand, but these are powerhouse makeup artists. Mm -hmm. just incredible at what they do and it and it's empowering and they share you know they yes. and they share information and they share their um love for and passion for for makeup so those are those are definitely people that that i follow i love your before i know um, nick has a question but your sister said she looks in the mirror every day that's her first inspiration and i gotta say mm -hmm. girl you know, i have always thought that you were flawlessly beautiful cammy so Absolutely. you look in my inspiration a lot for makeup looks and everything so go ahead yes. nick. <laughs> well i have had the absolute pleasure of having you do my face you did my face one time for one of roger's shows in harlem and i remember just you know, being there, I was rushing up from, from South Jersey and um, just kind of speaking to what Raj said, you just had such a calming presence. And I didn't even feel like you were touching my face. And when I looked in the mirror, I was like, oh my gosh, I did not want to wash my face off for like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have lived in that makeup for a week. So I did want, yes, that right there. Mm -hmm. that look was serious, honey. It was everything. But um, so you. one of the questions I have for you in talking about trends so, you know, I think there is a lot of pressure around makeup sometimes like, uh, I, you know, carve the eyebrows or no, do, you know, do this or do that. What's going to make me look the best and feel the best. So what are some trends that that have kind of, you know, been on the surface the last few years that you really like? And then what are some where you're like, mm, you know, <laughs> I'm always interested, like in the trends, honey, and like how you feel about the trends. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I find. That a lot of people don't follow trends because, like I said, I don't think a lot of people understand that there are actual trends or mm -hmm. set up stuff that doesn't make sense, like the squiggly eyebrows and the yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Leave your uh -huh. eyebrows alone, child. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. 
it's <laughs> and um, you know, things like that, and like the you know where there for a while there were like people, you know, there's people that'll go on YouTube and they'll like tape their eyes and tape snap their skin back and then rip the tape and they've got like these super cut, you know, um, eye makeup looks, you mm -hmm. know. But also to me, I'm like, take the time to practice, to learn how to get symmetrical with your eyes. Mm -hmm. eye mm -hmm. um, right. You yes. know, trend wise with brows, brows is a big issue. Um, there's so many things you can do with brows. Some, you know, and right now, um, you know, the brushed up, what we call soap brows is actually a product called soap brows, but it's mm -hmm. just you know, brushing your natural brows up into a, a you know a natural kind of really kind of big and fluffy, um, mm -hmm. almost I I it's not quite Brooke Shieldish because there's not mm -hmm. more fuzzy, but you know they're they're definitely brushed up. Like my brows, they are a little bit more sculpted just because the look that I was going for, I wanted them a little bit more sculpted. But it would be sculpting than this. It would really just be taking the product and just brushing up your brows and yeah. with the soap brow or with, um, you know, some type of um, pomade or something that would brush the brows up and to, you know, to mm. give you kind of the open, uh, you know, look to your eyes that are still very natural and symmetrical because the brows. So if the brows are jacked up, the rest of the face, guess what? It's going to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. If you, one thing together, just one thing. Uh, get some brows, get girl. And right. It, you know, the Harlem brow, what we call the Harlem brow, which is that beautiful, super sharp cut, uh, 10 feet of concealer up underneath here. And right. here. It's like, <laughs> <three feet. laughs> that has a place. It has a place. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But it's not always, that's not um, necessarily. Uh, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. so you got to know your face. You got to know, you know, it doesn't make sense for like Raj has a very natural look on her face to have a very sculpted, big, blocked out bra brow on her face. Right. Right. <laughs> right. It, you know, but, you know, people, you know, listen, I'm like, do what you do. But there are there are definitely things where it's like, I don't know, sis. I don't know. I don't know right. That. Right. <laughs> Uh, so like, where your friends? Don't, don't okay. be friends. Where your friends? Cause right. somebody, oh, somebody should have pulled you in. Like, yo, I mean, sis, I love you, and I see what you were trying to do here, but Let me help but you. nah, let me go. <laughs> yeah, fully in your brush it out just a little bit, you know. And it's it's um you know you know that kind of stuff. Trends I love, love, love that are um for you know I love graphic liner. I love '90s liner. I yeah, love kind yeah. of anything that's kind of high fashion, which is mm -hmm. in trend. Lilac eyeshadows and things like that yes. right now. Yes. A lilac, like full on punch of color. Mm -hmm. I, one of the mm -hmm. now for fall is kind of that um, vampy lip. Mm. Um, lip with really pulled back bare face. So yeah. no okay. of that, like no mascara, just kind of brushed up brows, perfected skin. And you know, skin should look like skin to me. Like that's mm, right. Aesthetic as an artist. Um, you know, skin should look like skin. Even your highlighting and contouring should look like it mm -hmm. from somewhere and not stuck on your face. My right. yeah. <laughs> it, you know, but for me, because I teach skincare as as the as part of the makeup regime. Mm -hmm. Not skincare and makeup is it's part of your your regime, you know. Mm -hmm. So your skincare piece for me, I can usually tell when you're someone who doesn't use a skincare regimen. Mm -hmm. You know, just for different reasons on what your skin is telling, but mm -hmm. all your makeup is laying. Mm -hmm. right. So you can't fool yeah. your makeup artist, sis. You can't you you can't fool it. Can't do it. Go ahead, Carrie. <laughs> Well, I mean, just kind of, um, you know, piggybacking on everything that you're saying right now, what would you say was like, one of the hardest techniques that you've learned so, that you've had to master? I'm, I'm sorry, I might be breaking up. What, what was one of the hardest techniques that you've had that you've learned to master over time? One of the hardest techniques I've had to master. 
Yeah. Symmetrical eyeliner. Ooh. Ooh. I did that. I'm like, <laughs> that's hard. Fact. I can't even do Fact. eyeliner at all. So listen. <laughs> I was like, what's the basic like, thing that people you know overlooking? But like, that's the hardest thing to master. Yeah, I got you. Right there is no games played. Yeah. Right. I was I was uh, going for my certification for fashion show, mm. and I didn't get it the first mm. time. I didn't get certification the first time. It was the hardest thing in my entire life to straighten out them lines on both eyes. Mm. How to do was do my weak side first. Mm -hmm. And then strong eye. Mm -hmm. okay. But what I was starting was a strong eye and then struggling so much with the weak side. So right. I had both hands to do the same thing. Wow, yeah. It is so y'all going to teach me how to learn which one is weak and the stronger. It's usually your writing hand. So if you're right handed, okay, you're okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't yeah. sure. Was, okay. Do you I don't know anything about makeup. So I'm learning so much from you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kimmy, can I ask you about skin? I was going to ask you a little bit later, but you've talked about it a, a lot. And I, I have to say, I've always loved your skin. Like your skin always looked flawless to me. And mm -hmm. I want to know, like, what are your favorite skin, you know, companies that you use or practices or habits and all of that? Um, I, what's important to understand about skin is understanding your particular skin. Mm -hmm. Everyone's... Mm -hmm different. Um, everyone has different concerns, mm -hmm. right? So I think with skincare, it was actually really instilled in me always. My mom has always instilled skincare in me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. From way back, in, you know, when I was a kid, my mom was like, you know, make sure you wash your face, make sure you do this, make, you know, towel dry your face. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, you know, taking care of, you know, what it is about skin that makes you unique. Um, I find also, you know, when I'm working with, you know, different, uh, with different clients of different ethnicities, there's usually kind of su su similar things that, mm -hmm. that, that people deal with, um, hyperpigmentation, mm -hmm. um, coloration. There's usually, um, you know, sometimes with, um, any, you know, deeper skin clients, there's usually, you know, a little bit of like this, you know, darkening here yeah, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. To, um camouflage those things but also it really has it really really boils down to your skincare regimen my favorite favorite formulas that i have used in the past um is actually good old-fashioned mary k really uh, okay. mary k okay. i used to use theirs yeah no it's not wow about the age of 25 I will let you all know from about the age of 25, you need to start getting into an anti-aging regimen. Mm. And, I'm 42. Um, I'm late. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody told me. Okay. <laughs> Your skin cells start to, they don't regenerate the way that they did before that. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, and the systems will, you know, sometimes it will change. Right. Cause when I, when I got 40, 35, 40, I was like, wait a minute. I had to change the system, right? right. Mm -hmm. right. I used to be really oily and now I'm really dry. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. I have to make sure that my skin is uber moisturized. It has serums. It has, um, you know, plumping, you know, right. so do it. In the <laughs> um, you know, I use, I use, like I said, I've been using, I used to use their, um, I've been on that system for a long time. So I used to use like the basic system and, that, and then it went to TimeWise. So I used that for a while. And now I use TimeWise Repair because I'm 46. Honey. And, you know, you wanted the preventative measures, right? Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. that you take care of, you know, your eye creams and things like that, that they're doing more than, you know, you want something that's got caffeine in it because it, it mm -hmm. does... It, you want to, you know, um, you know, want to have because it also serves as kind of a lymphatic drain underneath your eyes. Like you, you know, you these things you want to pay attention to. Let but me go ahead and get the get some coffee and put some bags under here. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> what you need 
Um, yeah. FedEx is another um, is another brand that I've used in the past. Um, I don't think system wise, I do. You know, I did love that it did make my skin feel more plump um, with it because of uh, the ingredients that were in it. Hey, what was the other company you mentioned? It. I it. It. Oh, it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And I and I've also used in the past. I've used um, La Mer. But La oh, honey. Coin. yeah, coin, right? Oh, me, coin. Um, but yeah. it's been in um, my my time wise routine for over twenty years. So wow. it's really really changed. You know, mm -hmm. I have to go into eye masks and and things like that. I I do have to do that. I have to stay hydrated under my eyes. But mm -hmm. you know, super important. Whatever it is that you're using, that you stay consistent with the regimen because right. the regimen is going to have all the ingredients that work together to uh -huh. keep mm -hmm. and generate and restore while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a moisturizer for day and night. Right. Mm -hmm. For daytime is going to have SPF in it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the deeper the melanin, you still need SPF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows I need it because I be trying it because my skin is really sensitive and I get burnt up super quick. So mm -hmm. it is important that you have the SPF in there. But that is like the key thing that you need numero uno before you even approach makeup. Mm. Yes, you know what? I I love that you. First of all, you're gonna make Shawan happy. Shawan's in our group because uh, Shawan does all Mary Kay stuff, and and I did buy their their um their charcoal mask recently, and I gotta say I really loved it. I used to use the Origins mask, but something about the Mary Kay mask it has a little bit of mint in it, and I feel like it really just does a great job on my skin. But you know, it's funny because the tried and true stuff we be trying to do all this newfangled stuff. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I love right. that, uh, that you said, can I ask you, um, how, gosh, I have, uh, we, I have a few questions for you, but what, what is your favorite foundation cosmetic must have before I go on to the other stuff? Cause I need to know what foundation you rock with on the oh, daily. Face my ashes. Um, if I switch, I'm going to tell you that I switch. Um, I have been in love with it, it, like, again, because when my skin switches, it also depends on what you want the overall look of your skin to be. Mm. Because with foundation, foundation can go anywhere from a tinted moisturizer to a full coverage. It could be cream. It could be powder. It could be liquid. It could be matte. It could be satin. It could be, you know, you mm. can get a, you can get a more, you know, a, a semi-matte look. I'm not in the matte phase of my life because I'm too dry here. Okay. <laughs> It's too much work to like make that, that, you know, I don't want to do it anymore. So, but what I have been rocking with is, um, a 24 hour, the 24 hour pro long wear foundation from Mac. Yes. Mm. I'm yeah. Not business. And because it doubles as, that's what I have on now. It doubles as concealer mm -hmm. and I like have on foundation, but it's full coverage. Yeah, I got. I, I still use Mac. I, I I tried that Ill Maquillage one where they match your foundation. Girl, that that stuff came and it was so orange. I don't care what they say on Instagram. It made me look like a pumpkin. I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it. I got mine too, and I put it down after I used it because it actually made my face create. It created texture on my face. And right. Like, like, how does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They give you a different skin layer. Like what? Right. <laughs> you like that's interesting. Yeah, like no, yeah, no. like I love when you said skin look like skin. I don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what um you know how how do you want your clients because you I want to talk about your teaching and the next phase of your life, but I also want to know just a little bit more about this healing that you do when people are in your chair. How do you want your clients to feel? after leaving your chair? Like what is your main goal, your main mission? I want them to feel confident. I want them to feel strong um, and capable. Uh, mm -hmm. I want them to feel like they can now take what they've learned and adjust it to whatever it is their needs are. 
but feel okay with that. Um, I want them to be able to say, you know what, I did this. We're going to adjust it, you know, to fit my needs or whatever, but I feel, this makes me feel good. You know, I feel good. I, I feel, um, you know, in some, some spaces, some people feel healed because we were having a conversation as we're doing the makeup, as I'm teaching, we're talking about whatever, um, you know, conversation that we're having and, you know, they feel connected, you know, so people will, people oftentimes will take pictures of the makeup that they've done and they'll send it to me, which I love. I love that so much. I yeah. I, yeah, you, you have definitely taught me a lot. I think the best thing that I've learned from you and the the most favorite face I've always loved from you is your nude looks because I feel like your nude looks are always flawless. Like I've seen people do nude looks before and it looks so painted on and you don't look like yourself, but yours always look like just a little glow and a face. And that is the kind of makeup that I love. Can you talk a little bit about how your business has been affected during the pandemic and how you've had to pivot and, you know, you've done teaching and, and seminars and things like that. How have you shifted during this crazy time? Um, well, I actually lost the career that I knew and loved and fought so hard for, um, right during the, during the pandemic, um, you know, as, we started to shut down uh, previously, like we had had stores closed and things like that. And, um, you know, I had, I had, you know, had full intention of returning to this career, you know, full intention, um, even though there was something tugging and pulling at me. And I believe that was God tugging and pulling at me saying, it's time to go. You've done what I, you've done what I, what, what I brought you here to do, it's time to go. And it was really, really devastating to me. Honestly, it was devastating to me. I felt um, many, many things. <laughs> um, I was very, I just was very depressed and very angry and just couldn't figure out, like, I don't know what to do. And I, cause I, I didn't see myself further than being a makeup artist. I didn't see myself further than what I was doing for other people. And that's where I got stuck. And I felt myself just stuck and, you know, a lot of prayer, a lot of, you know, water from the eyes, a lot of, you know, conversations with other people in the business and what they were doing and a lot of just in the house, you know, with my thoughts. <laughs> and I was like, listen, what can I do? I still very much love this profession. I, I know that I, can, I, when I had that realization that, you know, I am more than a, than a makeup artist, like. I'm a teacher. I, you know, help heal people. I help guide them in a direction, make them feel better about themselves. I still very much want to do that. I have to connect to people. For me, I have to connect. And so I decided, to say, okay, well, Zoom came up. All right. So let me start teaching some classes. I know Jack from Jack. I didn't have no business this time last year. This time last year, I had no business. Wow. I was mm -hmm. Business. I wasn't thinking about none of that. I was thinking about, listen, I just need to connect to people. You know, let me see what's going on. We have the mask. People are not going to really want to do makeup. I was thinking, you know, was negating everything I was doing. And I was just like, man, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I felt like I don't even know. I, I don't know what to do. And really? I spoke classes, people were responding to them. Um, I spoke with my, with my bestie who was already running her business. She was like, hey, listen, I took this business course. I want you to, you know, hook up with this business coach. Um, you know, take this class. It's free. It was a free, like week long class. My mind was blown. I was like, what is going on? I don't even know what's going on with this right now. I had no business, right? I had total imposter syndrome. My brain was like, you don't belong here. This is not, you know, I was in a in a in a, you know, in something that there were people in here making six, seven figures in their own businesses. And truth be told, when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, I've been making other people six and seven figure businesses and running Never. other businesses. Okay. So when that realization I was like, wait a minute, hold up. There's, okay. Let's, let's, let's regroup. Um, so I was able to create my business through taking this course and I still belong to this community. I'm still being coached um, in this community. And I, I got to tell you, man, it was, it was really grassroots you know, up. I thank God every day for all of the experience I had in my, in my previous career. Um, 
but it also, you know, it was when you're when you're running a machine is much different than when you're running things by yourself. So I had mm. to learn, still learning the marketing, the branding, the 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 everything, how to run the technology, how to, you know, how to do things like this, you know. Mm. And and really and really explore that, you know, because people in this pandemic, as we all know, are shut in. There's man, mm. I'm telling you, there's so much mental health issues going on. Yeah. You know, just being stuck in these four walls and then, you know, social just, you know, social justice and, you know, everybody deciding that Black Lives Matter all of a sudden and, right. you know, all of this stuff, you know, it was, a, it was a lot to deal with, you know, it was a lot to deal with. And I'm like, listen, as, as a Black woman, as an entrepreneur, what is going to be my mark? What is, how do I level up here? How do I make a difference? you know, for people, for my people and for my daughter, you know, to see right. as, as a young black woman, you know, and it, it just, you know, that's what keeps me going. That's how it got revved up. I make this is my name turned mm-hmm. backwards. Mm-hmm. That I'm, and that actually hit me several years ago. That kind of just dropped in my spirit several years ago when I probably should have left what I was doing two or three years ago, at least, you know, and then that came up and it just kept coming up and, you know, I'm running my freelance business and running my business so much differently now. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're thriving, we're thriving. So I'm so grateful. And then that I get to connect with people and I get to, um, help people and, still you know make make this world beautiful you know one way or another come hook a crook y'all gonna be cute oh, I love it. <laughs> yes I amen I, I did have a quick question you know you, you talked about getting through that uh that deep depression what is something that you did to to really get yourself through that some self-care points you know some moments of reflection that really uh, stuck with you? Um, I pray a lot. I, I can tell you my relationship with God is stronger than it's ever been. Um, I definitely have deeper relationships with close, close, close friends. I'm somebody, I, you know, I'm not like out there wah, wah, wah with everybody, but you know, you have your core group of girls, um, you know, and really being able to have long conversations about, things that hurt, things that are real and people that can give you perspective. Um, I've been on med, you know, I, I tell people I'm on medication to take the edge out because on top of the anxiety and the depression, it was a lot for me to handle. You know, it was a lot for me to handle. And, you know, I don't really advocate that unless it's necessary, but I couldn't even walk down the street at one point without busting into tears. And just, it was just, and, you know, from just the anxiety and just, you know, being afraid to just walk out in the street, you know, and New York was popping over here. It was, da- you know, it was dangerous out here in these streets and, you know, things is just was a lot to take on and, um, you know, definitely reading um, inspirational things, journaling. I'm, I'm in uh, Raj's and Monique's uh, wellness group, which is helping me so much. And, you know, love this is just about, you know, the, the exercise portion, but it's the, the, you know, the self, you know, it's the self care. It's the getting up and taking time for yourself and listening for me, listening to music, you know, listening to podcasts. Like I need to sing to myself. I want, you know, I sing all the time. So like those things that, you know, anything that causes, gives you peace, you know, and, and, you know, figure out what that is. And so those, you know, I, I did many, many things and I'll right. still do many, many things. Um, you know, and I can definitely say I'm in a much different place. I'm, I, you know, I probably actually feel more peaceful and more happy than I've felt in the last decade. I love that. You know, and that's real talk. Yeah. And that's that's work on me, you know, and I had to really say, you know, I, I, I am, I am better than my circumstances, right? Mm. Not deserving of the experiences that I have. And that, you know, God gave me the gifts and the talents that I have um, to be able to share those with other people and that to not take those things for granted anymore and to not take those things, you know, put, you know, you know, to not just kind of put them off to a waste, you know, to the wayside. We've lost so many people, 
you know, to this pandemic. We, did, we don't have time to waste. I don't have time to manage other people's insecurities. I don't have time to, to you know, to to deal with the stuff Ooh. that I was before. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm the one that went home, you know, with that sourness in my gut, with that, you know, that that low. And you're, you know, it's not serving me. It's not serving anybody. It's not serving, you know, it's not serving, you know, God. It's not serving the people that I serve if I'm in that place, you know, and women, and as, you know, women, we get, we're real used to funk. You know, we're real used to being, I got this, I'm strong, don't worry about it. I got, my poker face got real good, you know, over the past 10 years. You, you wouldn't even, but I went home with all of that, Mm -hmm. you know, and then with the pandemic and then, you know, building this, I'm, I'm sitting up, I'm literally sitting up when I first started long hours, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, working on things, trying to figure things out for myself. And but happy. But I love but I love what you've done, Cammy. And I gotta say, you know, you might not have thought that you were ready, but obviously you were because it was time for you to go on go out and be your own person. And I've known you always, not just as a makeup artist, but as a leader. Every time I would come to whatever store you were working in, you were running it and you were, you know, you yeah. were leading leading the staff as well as beating somebody's face, as well as answering customers and being on the phone. So you've always run a business. It might not have been your business, but you were always running it. So it's so beautiful to see you now doing your own thing. And so the classes that you offer online, you do do makeup application, but you also do one-on-one sessions with people, and you've just started your own cosmetic brush line, which I'm so excited about. Can you talk about that? And listen, sis, I need I need brushes to beat my face with, sis. Yes, okay, they look beautiful. Tell me all about this new collection. Yes, boss. I gotta say, boss. Yes, boss lady. <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. So um. So I'm teaching. So I started teaching the classes. So I teach at any kind of class, any kind of class you want to learn. Um, there's everything is listed on my website, any kind of class. I teach master classes as well. Um, I do more one on one classes than anything else. Uh, and then I'll have specialty classes where I'll have maybe like the 15 minute flawless face or the last one I did was saving your saving face, uh, you know, uh, saving your skin during the pandemic. So I'll do a master class like that. So there's different classes that I teach that way. And I do one on ones. And then I decided um, through a beta that I did last year in November that I wanted to launch a, a product. I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to necessarily launch a like a bunch of lipsticks and glosses and things like that. Um, but I wanted to, you know, what is, what, what do people need? I'm in classes. No one has tools, right? No one has tools. No one has the products that they need. Um, so I decided, so I started researching. I started getting samples. I started, yeah, I have like all kinds of stuff in this house that I'm like, so y'all might get some giveaways because I got brushes up the Yazoo up in here. Right back um, at you. <laughs> Um, and then, so then I, I was like, listen, okay, so I'm going to do a limited edition brush set, which is what I'm doing now. So this is my limited edition brush set. It's 12 pieces of yumminess. It's beautiful. There are all these gold ferrules here. This is the, my favorite brush of the bunch. They're vegan and they're super soft. Oh, yes. And no, I, you know what? I, I have a million brushes, but I don't know, one, how to use brushes. And I still, to this day, can, every time I'm doing my makeup, even though I have so many brushes, I never have a brush that does what I want it to do. Like, I remember one time you showed me a, um, uh, it was a MAC brush at the time, but you showed me a brush that was great for smoky eye because it blended in a certain kind of way. So what is it about your brushes that you like in terms of like makeup application and stuff like that? Um. I love them because they're, first of all, I love soft brushes and brushes that give you um, a lot of options, meaning you don't have to use a brush for whatever it says you're supposed to use it for, right? I use brushes for whatever I need them for. So like this brush right here is one of my favorite ones, which is the V heart brush. So it's very dense. Sorry, guys, it's dirty. I just use it in a class, but it's very dense this way and this way. And this is fantastic for applying foundation, concealer, 
for applying contour under the chin. Um, you can get in here and get into the nose. You know, it's not just the one thing. I'm, I'm a believer in a multi-product, right? So you got this brush too that can do your blush. You can get in here and hollow out the cheeks. You can also apply um, highlighter here, here. Um, so what I love about these is that even the eyeshadow brushes, you can use, there's some, dent, you know, um, eyeshadow application brushes um, that are a little bit more dense. And it's a nice array of dense and fluffy brushes because the dense brushes are going to apply, um, you know, pack on the color and then your blending brushes um, blow everything out. And then also if you want something where, you know, there's the in-between brushes where you can do, you know, your eyeshadow, but you can also put your concealer on with it, which is one of the pro tips that I have. Um, you can put your concealer on with one of the fluffier brushes and it gives your, your uh, concealer a more airbrushed look to your face. So anything that's like got those, you know, airbrush, uh, fluffier kind of looks to them is going to give you that airbrush. Um, and then I also love that this set has a dual spoolie on it, a spoolie and brow on it. So this has an angled brush. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yes. And I just love the bling. Can we just talk about the bling is just too cute, girl. <laughs> it's too cute. Yes. I love that. I'm good. Right. Love them. I, I, when I saw them and I started testing them, I got, saw them and I was like, oh my gosh, please work please do well. I was <laughs> testing them in my kits. I was using them on my clients and I was like, yes, and washing them and stuff and making sure. Oh my gosh. I was just, I'm like, I'm in love with this. I love the bling. I love, you know, the way that they look and the way that they feel. Yeah. They, they, they transferred a feeling to me. So it's like, you know, when you go to the store and you buy a card for someone and you really want that card, I'm a meaningful card person. Mm -hmm. I, I stand there until I cry or I laugh hysterically. <laughs> and, so, and I was like, I'll put you on that. I was like, that's it. That's the one. But I did it in um, fashion, um, mainly as a test. But I, I think you guys are going to really love them. And, um, you know, we'll see where this goes from here. I have some other ideas for some other things. But I want to, this is my first launch. So it's my baby, you know. So I'm super excited. But the pre-sale the, the pre is still going on, right? There's 65 for the whole pack? 65 right now. Yeah. Thing. So that includes um, shipping um, and tax. Mm -hmm. And it, you will get um, two free videos from me mm -hmm. on top of that. And there's a free gift involved for everyone who pre-sells. Once the pre-sale is over, they go um, up $20. Okay. And 65 for how many brushes are in the pet in the thin? 12. 65 for 12, 12. brushes, y'all. You need to go ahead and place an order because this just gave you a you whole do. commercial about how fabulous Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, I love them. I, I'm really excited for people to get them in their hands and, and really be able to work with them. So, and there's a lot of multi, like I said, Raj, you would love because they, they're multis. You can do so many different things with them. It's not just, you know, this is the powder brush. Use it only for powder. Yes. So, right. Yeah. I still don't have a good foundation brush. So I'm, I'm excited to try yours. That's going to be awesome. This right. Yeah. This right here. Mm -hmm. Baby Grace. <laughs> Go ahead, me. No, I was just going to say, you know, just I, I appreciate your level of transparency. Um, and I love what you said around, you know, just black women in general, just always holding it together, always putting this facade on. And it's not always easy to share our stories, but I know that you have touched so many women who are watching tonight and will touch so many women when we upload this to the podcast platform. Um, so just thank you so much. We are so thrilled for you. So, you. so happy for you. Everybody watching, please support her. It's imakefaces.com. I'll, I'll link it again. Please support this amazing black woman. We're just so happy for you. And I just, you know, anyone who comes on our, on our show, and feels that they're in a safe enough space to share things about them personally, we do not take that for granted. And we really appreciate you feeling comfortable to share certain aspects of your life with us today. Um, we are sending you so much love, light, healing, all of it. And we're just so happy for you, Cami. Thank you. So happy. 
You're yes, welcome. and thank you, sis. And before we go, we have some rapid fire questions for you. Um, we, oh, Carrie, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Before I, oh, okay. We, we, um, first of all, I wanted to shout out your your daughter, your ladybug, because I call my mom the ladybug, and I just think your your daughter is so super cute. I have literally watched your um your post about her. She's just a beautiful young lady, and so I had to shout her out on the show. Um, the beautiful ladybug, she is awesome. But as a mom and a wife and a career woman, like. What is your favorite self-care thing? And then I'll ask you your uh, your rapid fire questions. My favorite self-care thing is taking a bath. I go, yes, bath. honey. <laughs> that I'm with you, Cammy. That's, That's my thing. thing. I respect and music playing in the back. Like I play an like, iPad in there and I like zone out. Yes. Oh, it's the best thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or two. Or two. <laughs> You know, however, until um, sorry, and until the um, the cat and everybody else starts coming, so yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna do my rapid rapid fire real quick. Um, okay, I'm gonna skip the first one because we've kind of gone over it. But if you could sit down with any makeup artist, who would it be, living or dead? Uh, Kevin O'Quan. Okay. And then who is your celebrity dream client? Mm, um, I would say my celebrity dream client would be Beyonce. Oh, yes. You could, you would be dead, would be alive. dead would be Prince, of course. Right. We, get, we, we didn't even get a chance to talk about Prince, girl. And that, that's a whole other episode. I know. <laughs> what is your most used emoji? The purple heart. Yes. Okay. Um, what fashion week would you most like to be a part of? Because I know you do a lot with New York Fashion Week, but what, what's your dream fashion week? I think like show wise, like mm -hmm. what I would like to work with. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, oh, I would like to work with any of the up and coming designers, mm -hmm. any of the upcoming like, uh, Latin or black designers. Mm -hmm. Um I I would love to I would love to, I love working on new right on new stuff and support you know and supporting people. Um I would love to work on a Vivian Westwood <laughs> show. Ooh, wow. Yes, honey. Um, I did get to do one of my dream shows, which was with Tom Brown. That was incredible mm -hmm. um experience. He does really interesting um uh designs. Um yeah. That wants to be your. I, I was gonna say, shoot, probably you want to create your own fashion week, let alone you know work with anybody else. <laughs> yep. I, I'll 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 key a show. I'll be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> right. You and Steffi, y'all do a whole fashion week because I know Steffi's on here. Yeah. Um, you going on a dream trip with your girls? Steffi. Yes, for sure. I would key a show for Steffi for sure. There you go. <laughs> um, you're going on your dream trip with your girls. No kids, no husband. Where you going? Oh, I'm going out of the country. Right, uh, going to some tropical islands where there are bungalows, oh, and yeah. lots of sun, and uh, you know, just sand and Amen. beaches and no telephones. Yes, and just blue lagoon water. Where oh, blue is. lagoon? I'm gonna find it. Take me, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so there, if there was a versus between Shaka Khan or Patti LaBelle, who's winning? Patti. Patti! You said that without hesitation, Patti. Yeah. Patti. <laughs> All right now. Okay. Um, okay. Cake I, or pie? Together. I was, I was, I was what is oh, it? No, 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 go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was say, I've seen them. They were on tour together a mm -hmm. long time ago, like 20 years ago. Patti and Shaka were on tour together. Oh, yes. Yes, and Prince and made a a, a little uh, guest appearance. Okay. Yes, Patty, all the way. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I got to agree with you on that. We'll talk about why offline. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, cake or pie? What's your preference? Cake. Okay. And what is one cosmetic item you can't live without? Lips, lipstick, lip gloss. Yeah. Lip. Lip. I need a lip. 
clear, but like neutral, like a natural lip gloss, like yeah. not a gold color, but like a natural little, little pop of color. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, y'all have heard it from the one and only Cami Persez. I thank you so much for coming, lady. You have dropped so many gems for us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank being you. here. Y'all, please thank go you. and support this sister, www.imakfaces.com. Uh, we just appreciate you so much, and we are lifting you up. And y'all, buy her brushes. Listen, it's the last Come day of pre sale. They get more expensive as we go along. So support her. Thank you, sis. Yes, thank you. And, um, thank you guys so much. I just, thank go you ahead, so Cammie. much, Cammy. I just wanted to announce the winners of uh the the tickets tonight. Yes. So you will be getting a, a free virtual ticket to the SIP podcast presents Black Women in Jazz celebrating Bill Holiday. And that's gonna be going to Christina Calderon. And Monique Mohala. Hey, 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 hey. Congratulations, ladies. Congrats. So email Hey Girl and Sip Podcast so that you could get your free ticket, all right? Yes, right. much love, y'all. And listen, there are still virtual tickets out there. So go to our Facebook page, The Sip Podcast. Purchase your ticket and you can watch the show. It's going to be incredible. Next Friday, y'all, same time, 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will see y'all there. It's going to be incredible. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, I just put in the chat yeah. for Christina and Monique to email heygirl at the sip podcast com so you guys can get your free link. Yes. All right, y'all. Right, much love, you. and we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Kim, again. Thank you so much, Cammie, for joining yes. us. We really appreciate it, y'all. And we will see you next week for the show. Yes. yes. Bye. Bye.